one of the interesting avenues that we're following up now is that uh, since we started to mark many chicks beginning in 1998, essentially saturation banding of all the chicks that are produced in our territory, and, uh, beginning in 1998, and it's now 2008, it's been 10 years since we've started that process, and we've had well over 100 uh, of these young birds, we call them ABJs, adults banded as juveniles, uh, that's our little terminology, uh, we've gotten a lot of ABJs coming back, uh, birds coming back to the near vicinity of where they were, were banded three or four or five years before. And so that allows us, gives us a, really a unique window into the process of territory acquisition by, by young animals. Very few studies have enough enough animals marked as young individuals who are looking for territories to be able to say, ah, this, this animal has, has, is, was hatched here four years ago. It's setting up a, a, it's visiting, intruding in these territories in this particular area. It's living on this big lake over here and it ultimately uh, evicts a male or usurps the territory from this male in this territory. And so it's giving us a great deal of exciting information. By quality, I mean the potential of that territory to produce chicks, uh, which is the goal, the evolutionary goal of, of loons and all animals, uh, so to speak. And um, so quality has to do with uh, certainly the number of fish that are available in, in the lake. There have, has to be a large enough lake with enough food, chiefly fish, uh, for them to be able to, to feed their young. But most lakes in this area meet, meet that threshold, and so the more critical dimension is nesting habitat. Do they have, uh, does the lake have marshy areas, boggy areas often are, are favored by loons, or islands, because uh, islands and marshy areas tend to be less visited by things like raccoons, fishers, foxes, skunks, which are substantial uh, predators on, on uh, loon eggs. And so uh, you might have uh, uh, one lake that has a large uh, island far from shore where even the most courageous uh, raccoon is likely to, to swim to. Um, and if the loons place a nest there, they're likely to have, be able to produce chicks year after year after year on that territory. On the other hand, you might have another lake where it doesn't have any islands at all. Maybe all of the shoreline is upland and not boggy. It doesn't have any marshy, uh, emergent vegetation where they could nest and maybe, maybe get the nest far from shore and protect it from, from raccoons and other predators. So lakes do vary enormously in their, the, uh, their intrinsic quality. Loons don't mate for life. They, they, there are takeovers that occur. Uh, both males and females are liable to lose their breeding slot uh, to, uh, you know, a male could lose it to another male who comes in and, and displaces it from the territory, sometimes fatally. Um, females also get displaced commonly from their territories, and, and so they don't mate for life. Uh, they seem to practice the strategy that um, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a rough um, way of stating it but uh, loons seem to have an allegiance to their territory that's very strong, and they'll remain on that territory in most cases uh, for many years, uh, but they don't have a strong allegiance to their mate. When their mate gets displaced from a territory, uh, the, the loon will, um, will pair with the, um, the, the, the usurper of the territory. There's a major difference between males and females. We initially thought that there wasn't much difference, but that, that uh, if, a, if, if you have a pair on a lake and a, and a male intruder comes in and he's able to displace the, the, the established resident male on the lake, that resident male would move somewhere else and then the usurper would, would pair quickly with the, with the female, the resident female. And that certainly occurs, uh, and that occurs among females too. A, uh, an intruder female can come and displace the resident female and pair. This is the uh, bird that's the apparent victor at least in that round. Looking pretty roughed up anyway. That's the resident female after she's been driven onto shore after that chase. As we started to look at our data more closely uh, and started to, to um, reports started to roll in of, of dead loons 
occurring on territories, we realized there was a pattern, and the pattern was pretty clear, that male loons often die in the context of, of territorial takeover, and female loons don't. And so it appears, and, and, and in fact, the, the loons that are dying are, uh, you, you, it'll be a battle between the resident male and intruder male, and the loons that are dying are the resident males. And so it appears, and we're still learning about this, this is a, still a topic for investigation, but it appears that resident males are fighting too hard sometimes for their territories and paying with their lives for it. This chase around the lake lasted for 16 minutes. One of, the, uh, one of the hypotheses is that, that males become senile, and uh, we, our evidence for that is that males do lose, tend to lose mass over time on their territories, whereas females do not. And uh, so that is consistent with the idea that perhaps males are, are becoming less, uh, are declining in their condition to a point perhaps where they become easy prey for a, a, a large fit aggressive intruder. Another part of the story, in, inevitably, I'm sure, is that males and females have a, an interesting contrast in their nesting behavior, their, their contributions to nesting behavior. Uh, this is something that, that no other study has, has found, uh, to our knowledge. Um, we, males and females both look for nests together. Uh, and uh, to observe them, it looks like both males and females are are interested in finding the best nest location. But if you look at it closely, and you look at the data, and, and what you find is that it's males that are, that are the ones that are looking for, uh, for the nests, or the one, they're the ones that are positioning the nests. And, uh, and therefore, males are the ones that, uh, year after year, remember where the good nest sites are. We know that, all, that males also reuse good nest sites, and they avoid bad nest sites, and so over time, Males accumulate useful information about, about their territory. It makes that territory uniquely valuable to them. The males, male loons have a very simple rule, as do many species of animals. Uh, and that rule is, it's called the win-stay, lose-switch rule. And it just means if you succeeded in producing chicks or produce young at a certain breeding site, reuse that site. Very common sense rule of thumb that, that many animals employ. We've accumulated enough data on marked pairs, and we have enough cases where, where one or the other a member of a pair has been displaced so that we can look and see, well, what happens if a pair produces chicks from this nest site 
and then the male gets displaced uh, and the next year it's a new male and an old female. Do they use, do they still continue to use the rule? And uh, to make a long story short, when, a ma when the male turns over, uh, the pair suddenly stops using the rule altogether. Uh, even though the old female is there and potentially possesses the information about where to nest, that information doesn't make it to the next nesting attempt. On the other hand, if you have a female displaced on a territory uh, and a new female come in with the old male, that, that pair continues to act just, as, just like a, a pair that's com completely unchanged from the previous year. That is, they continue to use the rule.